Does Monday at the office feel like a storm? Not with Microsoft Copilot. That feeling when Copilot gets everyone up to speed instantly? It's sunny again. When Copilot simplifies complex data so your teams can act, that sun's shining on a beach. And when Copilot uncovers hidden insights, you're on that beach with your people and you find buried treasure. That's Microsoft Copilot. Learn more at Microsoft.com slash AI for all. of the reality is it's always it's newer and today with me um we're gonna talk about two shows that are truly so bad that they're amazing with <laughs> the host of so bad it's good with ryan bailey hi ryan bailey what up reality is nation what up <laughs> okay that's new they're gonna be like yeah, that- <laughs> <laughs> hey reality is nation what's going on everybody what's going on <laughs> you're all like right the, you're turning yeah. this into like the z morning zoo and i love it hey, hey it's it's uh it's me the fat man and i'm with my good pal noir we're gonna talk about the hits this week <laughs> yeah um <laughs> so So usually in the past, I've like bundled Vanderpump Rules or Summer House with like other shows that I'm covering. But this is the first time that it's been on that I've been doing four episodes a week. So I felt like I had to dedicate one single episode to Vanderpump Rules and Summer House a week. And so this is the start of a new series called The Kids Are Not All Right, because I feel like Vanderpump Rules and Summer House are like bi-coastal siblings. You know, they're bi-coastal, actually bi-coastal, unlike Mia from potomac and so i feel like you have to they're like sisters they're like yeah they're like they're like the yin and yang of bravo you know what i mean like i feel like they're tethered and i love that i think so (laughs) ryan you had carl and kyle both on your podcast like in the last what two weeks or week right yeah and i feel like um i feel like you're like the best person to be on because i think as you mentioned on the podcast like the most exciting relationship to talk about this season is the relationship with the demise so far of Carl and Kyle. Well, I mean, I, it's so funny. I was talking about how we look at male relationships as opposed to Mm -hmm. female relationships. And, you know, it's, I feel like, and and it's kind of like how we view Schwartz as, as well, Mm -hmm. is that we Mm -hmm. treat these, I'm trying to pick my words wisely. We treat them like they're, um, they're emotionally crippled because they are. So we treat them like a broken bird. <clears throat> so if they're like, <laughs> we're like, oh my God, why, why can't you guys make it work? Like even Schwartz, the, the, the wool, I mean, I don't think Schwartz is purposely pulling wool over people's eyes, but the fact mm. that <clears throat> so many people have sympathy more for him sometimes than Katie <clears throat> blows my mind in this season alone. But the same thing is that like when I talk to Carl or uh, Kyle, I I found myself going like, are you guys okay? Are you okay? Tell me you're okay. Are you okay? Can we make it work? <laughs> and you realize like I, with the female relationships on Bravo, I'm always like, yeah, screw that. Yeah. Don't never talk to her again. She's, she, she's horrible. Yeah. Erica Jane sucks. Like don't do I don't ever be friends with her. And so it's very interesting. I feel like how we view those different uh, relationships, but it it kind of rocked me the Carl Kyle thing, especially this week's episode because I'm like, mm-hmm. I don't know how you come back from saying that your friend did a bunch of coke uh, and he, he and then it was like he forgot his laptop. I'm like, dude, I forgot my <laughs> I forgot my yeah, I I forgot my pants at work one day and I wasn't even on coke and like this guy. This guy's in LinkedIn trying to get a job. Like, and he's like, uh, please don't watch Summer House this episode. Like, you you forget your computer once at work and suddenly you're cocaine bear. Like, yeah, that's... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's too much. Okay, I can't wait to talk about this. I think the shorts psychoanalysis is so good and especially, <clears throat> like, how people view men in reality TV, like, these, like, tender sweethearts that, like, we need to tend to. It's so bizarre. But before we get into that, Ryan, yeah, I have to ask, because this is your first time on my podcast, yeah. I always ask my guests, who is your problematic favorite on reality TV? You know, it changes depending on which season. Like, I would say <laughs> this year, I think Sutton can be really problematic, but she's a favorite of mine. But I also think it's the company 
in which she keeps on that show. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, I really didn't like Erica Jane and Rinna. So by comparison, I really liked Sutton because Sutton was one of the only people standing up to Erica. And Erica to this, I mean, like Erica, I, you know, sorry to all you guys listening. Erica is a virus. You got to squash out. Like the fact that she's trying to even make a comeback now, she's trying to like go, Hey, I guess, I guess it is snowing in Pasadena. (laughs) And I was just like, how much, how much of the victim's money did you pay for a snow machine to blanket Pasadena today, Erica? (laughs) Like, I love that. It's like, why the fact that this person's not hiding their face everywhere and they're just like, yeah, I'm on a new season. Yeah. Like, it's so weird to me, the ego that goes into all of these people. So Sutton is one. Um, I don't know if it, I don't I don't think Karen Huber is necessarily problematic, (laughs) except I didn't like, I except I didn't like when she was calling Robin Roberts on tweets. Yeah. She was like, Oh, is that what Robert was saying? And I'm like, that's a Mm -hmm. dumb joke. That's idiotic in so many ways, but you, I love Karen Huber. And you Mm -hmm. realize this is that with housewives, sometimes there's our favorites have, I'm beginning to realize our favorites sometimes are just a feeling we get. There is no reasoning why some, no, it's like, I've seen people, I've seen, listen, I've seen people go to war on Twitter over Teresa Giudici. They're like, I will so hunt silly. you down. I would I'm like, it's not like, it's really scary. Like they go and they're like, and then if you disagree with them, you'll be, they'll be like, well, there's just some really unpleasant people on here. And I'm like, yes, you, you're the unpleasant person <laughs> on here. Like, what are you doing? Like, I, this is anyways. Um, I would say though, uh, I would say also in a loving way, Sheena is a problematic fave because <laughs> uh, if you listen, she's been on there for 10 seasons, like for like, she, I feel like she's fought her way onto that show each season, even this season, <laughs> they didn't even use her for the first two episodes really. And then the third episode, she's like, yo, Schwartz, do you want to fuck Raquel? Sorry. Like, it's just like, and then like yes. to me as somebody divorced, I was like, oh my God, like, I don't care if they're like, there is a certain thing of like, you know, that would hurt somebody. You just know that would hurt Katie, regardless of how you feel about Katie. So, but at the same time, I love Sheena. Like I I love what she represents on that show. Yeah. Yeah. Sheena has this uh, thing about her where, you know, Vanderpump rules a very problematic cast. Like if you watch it, I think, so if you go on Twitter, Danny Pellegrino is right now rewatching it. And he keeps like posting up old videos and clips and and just like screenshots of stuff. And it really is like Vanderpump Rules is one of those shows where it's just it is so bad. It's good. It's like and I think the thing that happened later on in seasons with Vanderpump Rules was that like as we got to know these people semi IRL, like getting to know them off the show, you're like, oh, wow, these are fucked up people with terrible views, right? Like the Jax Taylors and the Stassi stuff. And you're like, oh, I don't want these people on. The thing with Sheena that I have loved since season one is that Sheena is the most toxic to herself. Like she always gets herself into these situations where she does something that's kind of like a it's like a low simmer mean thing to do, but she's always like, what? Like even this episode, she's like, I just am so sick of people saying that, like, you know, judging me for me coming from my heart to like do something nice for people. Like Sheena always has the best of intentions and the worst delivery. Like last season getting engaged the same weekend as James's engagement party. And then saying to everybody, we were going to secretly get married this weekend, but we didn't. As if to get patted on the back that she didn't do that. She, like, Sheena is just so, she's so silly. I, I adore Sheena. Sheena is a humanitarian. Sheena's a human. Well, I don't yeah. Sheena, Sheena, <laughs> Sheena, by the way, I'm so, Hey guys, to anybody listening, I'm so sorry. I know I came on so strong in those first five minutes. Like I just was so, I've, I've been a bottle ready to pop all day. And, and I think you know why, <laughs> no, but like, I'm, I'm like ready to explode talking about these shows, but I think Sheena, like she fought against those girls, like, you know, the, the Stassi's, the Katie's, yeah. the Kristen's, like we all saw her. She fought against those girls for so long. And I just feel like it's so funny because each season she fights for her place there. And each season she brings something unique. She brings something. <laughs> I, she like, who else is like, 
out there like giving us information of like that one like two seasons ago when she was in in love with that what is it, a busser or something and he bought she <laughs> bought him a ping she bought him a penguin or something and then and then she bought Max an Apple Watch and like and she these are like she puts her out heart out there so much and I don't know. I, there's something really weirdly charming about that because she's never yes. going to potentially know the right things to say. And in the not knowing there is beauty. Like if you yes. are purely able to be yes. somebody that like, just, I, I don't think I could ever be like that. I don't think you could ever be like that. Cause we're thinking <laughs> potentially about what we feel and think about something and all the sides of it. But she just, she just is, I mean, I, it's like, it's like, it's meditative almost, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's almost a Whitney Rose quality to her. It's the not knowing. I'm Whitney and then- Rose. I think you are being mean to me, Heather. I and will Sheena's not like a- read Bad Mormon. And Sheena's like a sped up robot. She's like, wah, 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 wah. like she's always- well, and the, the Sheena laugh. The Sheena when she like interviews Schwartz, I'm like, uh-huh. okay, <laughs> like, it's so good. And, and, and also like, I'm like, who else has a, like good as gold. I genuinely like as a song. Yes. I mean, like I do, I, I, I could hear good as gold every day for the rest. Of, like if there's one song on a desert <laughs> Island, that could be it. Um, I mean, I would pray for death in the first month, but like, that would be it. And then I don't know, like there's so many, how many relationships she's been on through on this show and she's mm-hmm. still kicking. And like, you know, the fact that she's, and also as, as, one podcaster to another, she's doing miracles for podcasting. She's making <laughs> podcasting. The fact that shenanigans, shenanigans, as I call it, she is like bringing podcasting to the forefront. Just, you know, I'm like, yeah, man, like podcast it up. Yes. Yeah. Shenanigans is I, one of the things that I love about shenanigans is that like, she's really made fuck, Mary kill like a part of her brand. Like she's like yeah. Tom Short. Okay, fuck Mary Kill. Like it just it's so like <laughs> it, it you know, Sheena's kind of like devoid of a personality in a, a lot of ways, but then it's the it's the lack of a personality that makes her so fucking charming and adorable to watch sometimes. Like she just is like the most basic girl, but she's got so much confidence in her basicness that I I like I have to pat her on the back for it. Like, damn, you made an entire brand out of that. You have a podcast, yeah. you have a YouTube channel. Like when shit was going down, when we weren't sure if Vanderpump Rules was gonna come back, Sheena was like, I'm getting myself on the internet and I'm gonna make some yeah. money. <laughs> well, you know? I have a I have no like listen, I, I used to work in an acting studio and a lot of those Vanderpumpers would come into that acting studio. Uh, before Vanderpump Rules, you know, and I, I had access to their notes, like what, you know, was said about their acting. And I will say Sheena got pretty good notes. Ariana got great notes. Sheena got like the Toms, not so good in terms of acting and, uh, you know, but Sheena and Sheena, like, I feel like Sheena would have made herself some sort of success regardless of this show. And, you know, whether it you know, whether that's why it's so funny to watch her do a TikTok scene with Raquel last night, because yes. listen, if Sheena was like early or like if Sheena was 21 right now, I'm telling you, she would be, she would be one of the bigger influencers out there. Like, you know, yeah, she, she would, would I'd like be on the forefront. Followers. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. hundred percent. I, I think Sheena was born 10 years too early. She <laughs> killed it. <laughs> You know, it's it's like Malcolm Gladwell says in Outliers. You got to be born at the right time. And, so, you know, the world sometimes, the world might not have been ready for Sheena or the world might have been ready, like, but Sheena was ready for the world. And I feel like, no, I just, I, I she, she cracks me up because it's really real. Like, think about this though, too, is that I feel, I feel like every season she finds a way. And I don't think this is on purpose. I don't think she's sitting there going, okay, um, they're not going to focus on me and Brock. Um, what, how do I do this? How do I get on the show? Okay. You know what I'll do? I'll go over and I'll start shit with Schwartz uh, about <laughs> hooking up with Raquel. Like I <laughs> genuinely think that's what Sheena would have done, even if there weren't cameras there. Yes, and that I appreciate because it works for the show. Like I feel horrible for Katie, but it works for the yes. show. And it's a way that you're like, oh, Sheena is now in the middle of something. Like now we're getting a fight between mm-hmm. Katie and Sheena, which we haven't seen for seasons, you know? 
Yeah, I felt like this episode was such a classic Vanderpump Rules episode because you had, you know, Lisa Vanderpump going to Sir and like stirring shit up between (laughs) accidentally about a dog between Raquel and James and like also kind of like making Peter feel like shit about getting dumped by Raquel. Also kind of making Raquel feel bad about making out with Peter, like classic Vanderpump rules, busy body stuff at the, at, you know, at her place of business. You had um, at the end of the episode, this like big party and a party where all these things are happening. You have Sheena versus Katie. Then you have Sheena kind of versus James. And then you have James versus Raquel. And then you and have then James, you have- James, like buddying up with Katie against Sheena. Of like, it's, yeah. it, well, I'm saying exactly. It's yeah, it's what I'm saying. Oh, I hate her pocket. You know, like, that's amazing. Are you like, did you ever think you'd see a day where Katie and James were like commiserating? Yeah, and then James getting upset about what is this place that they were at Canyon House? What was it? So it's called it's called the Canyon Club in Agora Hills, the and Club. the the great thing is so this was okay. So this is a little uh, I hate as a grown man to say tea, but this is this is the tea. Um, <laughs> so this was record. This was like this was like filmed like four or five months ago, but last January, <clears throat> like about a month and a couple weeks ago. Uh, Tom did his original show at a go- this Canyon club as well. And DJ James Kennedy, um, like he, he went on after Tom and immediately when the, the first song that DJ James Kennedy was DJing, he ripped his shirt off. Like it was the first <laughs> song. Like it was like, usually you work up to like a pulling your shirt off, but he was like, let's go, let's go, 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 go. And he ripped his shirt off. But this is that is the night that he met Ali, his new girlfriend. So he was like, "Yeah, we'll go." That's why, because he, he made reference. He's like, "Oh, the place where it all happened. The place where <laughs> he met her that night at the Canyon Club in January of last time." Now, I did not. I mean, and I've said this on my show, so I, I'm not ashamed to admit it. I was doing sober January, so I thought it would be good to do mushrooms that night because (laughs) that way I I wouldn't drink. And it turned out to be one of the worst decisions of my life because (laughs) I didn't, I just thought it was like, Oh, I I'm micro dosing, but I guess I didn't micro dose. And then all of a sudden (laughs) I was all of a sudden I was standing behind Sheena and Brock who at that time, Sheena was still not talking to me. That's a whole nother story, but I didn't. (laughs) And then I just, I was so out of it that I was like, it was fun for a second. And then I was like, oh, am I in an episode of Vanderpump? I got so out of it. And then you would look up and Tom, Tom would be like, you know, uh, Rosanna, yeah, dick me off. And he has like a 14 piece band on there. And you're just like, oh my God, I'm out of my mind. And then finally my friend got me out of there afterwards. And like when I was leaving, Schwartz was at the door and I, don't, I didn't really know Schwartz at the time. And I said, Hey man, I'm on mushrooms right now. And he goes, Oh, I'm there. I'm there a lot, brother. I'm there a lot. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. So this was the same, and Agora Hills, you guys is in the Valley. Like the it, it's, it's like, so it's, it's nearing Calabasas, but it is a huge club. So it's like the fact that they're able to like sell this place out and stuff. And I, I really do actually unabashedly, unironically like Tom Sandoval and the most extras, mm-hmm. but it's all mm-hmm. covers of your favorite songs. Like, Mm-hmm. But it, it, it's out there in Agora Hills. Like, this isn't Hollywood. This is a whole different scene. So it's like one of those places on a Saturday night that draws the locals, which was great because, mm-hmm. like, there was all these locals that I don't think they knew what the hell they were watching. You know, they were just there <laughs> on a Saturday night to hear some music, you know? I just, I love that you were there the night that James Kennedy met his princess, Allie, the most beautiful girl he's ever seen. Oh, stunning. The love of my life. The love of my life. Are you <laughs> kidding me? The love of my life. So last week I didn't get to do a Vanderpump episode. I, I got to be at other people's podcast work. So I just want to touch on this. That last week when James bit into Allie's face as she ate her burger, my whole body like retracted into itself. I was like, what? Ah! Like you, James is. Oh, I yes. picked up on something last night is that this is something the last two episodes that have happened. Every time she asks him, are you, are you drinking tonight? He'll be like, Look at you. You're so beautiful. Oh my God. Look at, you. <laughs> Look at you. Oh my God. Your beauty perfected. Oh my God. It's yeah. always when she'll be like, Are you drinking tonight? Yeah, yeah. But you're so beautiful. Oh my God. How do you do it? Like, and oh God, Allie, yeah. I, you know, listen, I, I don't know. Like, I, 
Allie seems nice. Like, Allie, I don't really have bad things to say about Allie, except that, like, we all know DJ James Kennedy from watching the show. Like, we and we know mm-hmm. this uh, version of DJ James Kennedy. I don't know if there's other versions of DJ James Kennedy, but, like, how do you then have a plot line where it's like, oh, I've got to go talk to Raquel because I've got to admit I cheated on her with La La. Uh, and I'm still friends with Lala, but you have nothing to worry about. Like we even found out last night, Lala was with, uh, cheated on Randall with DJ yes. James Kennedy. Like I, I, yeah. the, the morals, these are really bad people. The morals on this show <laughs> are so out of whack that I think it would like confuse the regular viewer of like, Oh, is it cool if I cheat? Like, it must be cool. It must be totally cool because they're all totally, they're just like, how does Lala then have that scene? with Katie and Raquel where she's like, don't, you know, Raquel, you cannot hook up with Tom Schwartz. That's where I draw a line. (laughs) Yes, I did. I did hook up with DJ James Kennedy while you guys were together, but that's a different thing. Like, it's so weird. It's um, yeah. These people are like just completely devoid of morals. And I think that that's what makes the show just like so good to watch. And I think for a little while, like Vanderpump rules in the middle was like, we're adults and we're buying houses and like, we're not going to get shit faced anymore. And we're like going to be on top of it. And James was like, I'm sober. And look, I'm here for everybody's sober journey. But like, that is not the show that I'm watching. I'm watching this show right here where people have like they're just like swimming in hypocrisy. Lala is, you know, gonna have body. I love when Lala gets all like, I'm gonna fuck you up. Like there's gonna be bodies <laughs> on the ground and it's gonna be you and Raquel, like you and Tom Shorts. I'm like, shut up, Lala. Lauren from Utah, like get a grip, okay? I love this entire cast the way it's set up right now. I love all the mess. I love that there's like a this doggy, this <laughs> doggy drama like storyline between James. Listen, and that's Raquel. real, man. Like I understand doggy drama. Like I've, I, like I've, I, you know, like I understand that, but I, but also can we just stop for a second to be like, do you say a puncture wound? That dog got a yeah. puncture wound. And then we saw last episode <laughs> where Sheena goes over to Raquel's studio and she's like, she's not feeling well. And we saw the dog just like flip it. Yeah, and then it turned out right? a puncture wound on the, like a full on puncture wound. And then they're like, I, I put her in like a, a like a kennel while I was away. And it's like, she tried to dig out of the kennel. I'm like, yo, yo, yo. I don't like DJ James, Kenny, la, la, whatever. But can we talk about this kennel? Like, are we, is there a lawsuit happening? Yes. Cause that feels like yes. you got a puncture wound and then you didn't even know about it until like, where was this kennel? Was it Vanderpump dogs that you left? Yeah, but, uh, uh, I've got a Raquel. Oh, she'll be taking nice care of. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> You're yeah, not leaving. You're not like, escaping here. Yeah. I'm like, what? And then that poor dog, like last week, the dog literally sighed. Like everybody was like, nice apartment, Raquel. And they're like, she's like, yeah, Graham's not feeling well. And she, what did <laughs> Graham say? literally sighed. Like, oh, we're filming wait, wait, again. <laughs> but also wasn't there of like, and then we saw like a sad shot of them on the floor. And I think there was like a, a pickle and a tamale next to her. Like she was just throwing food. <laughs> like, Throwing random food. And I was like, what the? It was like this week when in the second scene at Schwartz's place, he all of a sudden had like $30 with magnets up on top of the fridge. I was like, (laughs) you literally took a magnet and put a $20. It was in the deep background. But I was like, why does he have $30 magnetized to his fridge? Like, you know, a lot of people carry wallets, but Schwartz just magnetizes them to his fridge. So he remembers on the way out. I have no idea. I have no idea. All right. And then, of course, the big fight is this uh, Sheena's shenanigans are up to no good. Uh, You have this fight between Sheena and Katie. And I think that I have to say that as I I was a Katie, I was a Katie empathizer from the beginning because Tom Schwartz, to me, has always been the biggest piece of shit. He is a sad sack of a human, and he's always been awful to that girl. And she is living, starting to live her best life because she is moving herself away from this man. And I think yeah. one of the things that's like frustrating to her in this situation is Tom and I are in a good place. Stop roping me into this shit by setting up my friend with Tom Schwartz. Like, yeah. I think that when when Katie is surrounded by or like engulfed in Tom Schwartz, Tom Schwartziness, she gets really overwhelmed. She gets really sad. And I just like, I genuinely felt really bad for Katie. I also, I don't feel bad for Sheena. You know, we talked, we talked a lot earlier about how much we love Sheena. Yeah. Listen, Sheena is a shitster. 
accidentally yeah. with good intentions. But, but she's probably, she, she probably was a shitster in junior high, in high school. She probably has not changed her pattern of behavior since she was a child. So like, it's yes. not like she's just all of a sudden a shitster. I think this is how she been, she's been her entire life. Yeah, she's a sh- she's a shitster with a heart of gold, you know. Um, it's yeah. good as gold even. And so, like Sheena, g- bringing shorts on the podcast. Literally, she's just bringing people on for content. Like when James said that, like she had Raquel on. Raquel was talking shit, and then she called. He called Sheena to sh- uh, complain. Brock was like, "Why don't you come on the podcast and we could talk about it?" <laughs> so I don't like- want to on your podcast. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Sheena is out here looking for downloads, okay? And as, a, yes. as podcasters ourselves, we say, I, good for I you, I get Sheena. it. I totally <laughs> get it. Are you kidding me? But where Sheena loses me is when she starts to justify things by being like, well, when we were at Vanderpump Gardens in Vegas or whatever, Vanderpump Paris, you said that it was totally fine and you gave her blessing. Like, Katie now has gone on social media and said, like, that's not the case. We had like a girly chat. It was not a blessing at all. And I think Katie's making a great point to say, Sheena, even if I said that to you in Vanderpump Paris or whatever, I'm telling you right now, I don't like this and we don't need to talk about it. But Sheena, because she has that heart of gold and constantly feels misunderstood because she is a confusing person, she's like <laughs> arguing with them. And that at the end was a, a classic Vanderpump Rules ending in that episode. It was so cool. <laughs> I just love it where Sheena, I mean, this is not the exact dialogue, but Sheena was like, uh, you said you got fingered in Vegas. Come on. Like you said, you said, no, you said you did the thing with the guy. So I thought, I thought Tom should be able to have sex with Raquel. Like, I love the twisted logic of like, you told me that it was the best. Like, I mean, I just love that. It was like, cause then you're just like, you know, Katie's position there, even if I'm like, oh man, I totally trusted the wrong person. Like there is a thing yes. where, you know, with like, friends where you say something and they know to take it with a grain of salt because it's you you know what mm-hmm. i'm saying like you're like oh he's just he's just being in his feelings right now he's just you know yeah it's not like oh i give your ex-wife permission to go sleep with everybody because ryan said that it, i don't know it was so <laughs> weird because everybody else so would weird. pick up on that and sheena was like well i guess raquel and Schwartz can totally have sex now this is great Yeah, yeah. And then she's doing these like double dates and stuff where she's like putting Raquel in particular situations like she's she is now you don't remember that season where she talked about that guy I forgot his name, but the one who was supposed to be her baby daddy where the baby was going to be named uh, Madison Marie. Oh, uh, yeah. Rob, Rob, Rob Rob Valletta. Yeah. So that season where she was like, Rob, 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 Rob. Yeah, she's yeah, like yeah. taking that and she's like, short, 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 Raquel, short, 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 short. And it's like, get a grip, Sheena. Calm well, down. But Schwartz, and see, the, and I think this is why I get so upset about Schwartz is that to a real, I'm talking like a tenth or like even, you know, is that there's aspects of him that remind me of me and I oh, hate yeah. me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I do not. No, no, I don't mean this in a, oh, pity, you know, no. But I'm saying there's like, there's certain things of like the way he's so middle of the road, the way he really truly didn't ever have Katie's back. They're really, truly like, it's like, dude, pick, tell me how you feel. Do you even know Mm -hmm. how you feel? Like, do you know how you feel? Because either you do or you don't. But this whole like, I love Katie so much and I respect her. Oh, man, it would feel like cheating if I hooked up with somebody. Did it feel like cheating when you cheated on Katie in the marriage? Did that feel like cheating? Like, that's the part that I'm like, what? This is wild. So he's still like doing the good guy. Like, oh, man, this is just so what I I get so sad. It's like the notebook. Like, should I have tried harder? Like, I don't know. Like, if you really, you know, like. Remember, this was a relationship that we all kind of saw for, you know, like we saw, even though they didn't see, like they said <laughs> shit like, um, who else am I going to watch Pauly Shore movies with all day and eat candy? Like, that's, <laughs> that's what they, like the last season they were like, we can just agree. We don't like having sex with each other, right? People should be cool with that. They said that on national television. Yeah. I mean, Tom Schwartz got in a lake got out of the lake, put on a suit, and went and got married in the woods. Like, that is a level of effort this man brings to his own <laughs> wedding day. Like, I I just, he's such, yeah, he, and he does that thing where he's like, oh, I'm just a goofy guy. I'm just like a goofy, well-meaning, like, charming guy. And I guy. think, oh, I think he, there is an aspect of that that is true. I just think that there's another aspect of, like, 
It's just you can't play every side. You and you yes. can't. And the thing is, you know, uh, we always talk about power imbalances and things like that. Yes. Is that no matter what people think of Raquel, remember that Raquel, like, uh, you know, I feel like she got like so much crap for that photo with Schwartz last week yes. on her yeah. Instagram. And yeah, it was like, I, it was really, I thought, oh man, <laughs> that's really bad in so many ways. But Schwartz let her do that knowing that I think she would draw so much fire for yeah. that photo. And like Schwartz just let her do that. Schwartz could have said, you know what? Let's not put that photo out right now. Like, I, I think it's weird. Or Schwartz could have put that on his account Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. It, there was, it was very, I don't know if I'm being clear, but it was just very weird to me. It's like another where he'll let everybody else fight around him. Yes, it's like what Ariana yes. said at the very end. It's like, how yes, are we in another perfect. year of he gets to completely escape any kind of prosecution and now the women are fighting with each other and he's just like, oh man, this sucks. Oh no, you guys are fighting over me? No, I love everybody. Well, he did this last season also when Katie was like trying to basically have his back against Tom Sandoval to say like Tom Sandoval is like taking over and he's like, you know, kind of like not letting Schwartz make any decisions. And so Katie's trying to step up and be like, I'm going to speak on behalf of my husband. And then Tom Schwartz is kind of painting it as like, oh, yeah, you know, my like uh, my controlling wife. Oh, Katie, like, you know how Katie is like. He has done this time and time again. And that's why she said, like, it was the last episode of the episode before where she said, you've never had my back. You never even had my back when I had your back. Like, when I would be on your side, you would never have my back. And that's his problem. He's 100% doing it with Raquel where he's like, oh, I'm going to let this woman take this, you know, heat off of me. When ultimately, he was the one that was married to Katie. The, The onus is on him to have respect for Katie. It's not on Sheena. It's not on Raquel. It's not on any other woman. It is on Tom Schwartz. So fuck you, Tom Schwartz. Um, I and will you know what? It's like, I, I, and listen, yeah, no, it's hard because like from my, you know, from our, it's like, I, I genuinely say, I say these like highly critical things, but I like all of them because I, you know, there's a part of me <laughs> that grew up watching, not, you know, gr- not grew up, but like, you know, we all like, this is one of the first reality shows that I truly, truly loved. So regardless, Mm -hmm. I still like this person. I like Schwartz, but I'm like, dude, this is what's going to be fascinating. Is that like, he's like, Oh man, I don't even need therapy. I put it all into this place. No man, you do need therapy. Like you absolutely do. It would be, he's not going, what, (laughs) this is like, what scares me for like, it doesn't scare me, but what I, it scares me that he won't do the work now that he's yeah. like, he's just going to like do whatever's potentially easier. Um, yep. And he's so liked by so many people uh, and he's so charming. And I think that's a natural charm. I don't think he has to work at it, that he's never going to have to put in the work for him to true. Like he's also probably truly not happy, you know, like yeah, he's, 100%. he's going to find the same feelings that he had with Katie. He's going to find those again and again and again. Cause he's not working on the core issue, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Ryan, that was a wonderful psychoanalysis of him. And a hundred percent that's the issue It's like, he's been depressed. Like he came to Los Angeles. He basically didn't do much. He accidentally got on this show and yeah. that's been it. And then he got Lisa lucky. wouldn't even let him work at the bar. Remember when he tried to yeah, interview exactly. and like Lisa was like, Oh, I'm sorry. It's not going to work out. And he's like, okay, cool. And he still got to be on the show and he's just as big a part of it as everybody else without he, ever having he lasted to work like, stuff. Yeah. He lasted half an hour at a pride event at a bar, like bartending. And then he had a panic attack and then he had to leave. And Lisa kind of, Lisa also loves it, a broken bird. So I think she finds it actually really lovely. Like, so why she's like kept James around, even though he's like cussed her out, basically. James has essentially accosted Lisa's own son. And yeah. Lisa Call, still called called around. Lisa's son horrible names. Literally <laughs> like got lippy, got lippy with Ken. And he's like, I'll knock your spark clear out. Like, remember I'll that when he got all, I'll, I'll knock, knock your, your spark, spark out. out. <laughs> and uh, he's done like the, the, and this is what cracks me up about Lisa is that like, literally 
you know, storyline for a couple of years about this guy's um, sobriety, his alcoholism. <laughs> and then this season, it's all, I'm like, how are they going to handle this? All it is, I'm like, oh, I see you here at the DJ table. Are you drinking? And he's like, yeah, a little bit, but it's cool. We go, okay, well, keep on rocking, DJ James Kennedy. Like, I'm like, how is it this big of a deal? He was going to die. He was going to go down a bad path, but it's not like, well, I see that you're very responsible now. Like, well, make sure you spin the hits, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's almost like Lisa's like, well, I know he's drinking, but it's more exciting because he has to work here with his ex fiance <laughs> for the content to get turned out, you know? So, like, Lisa's well, Lisa, like, mm, it's okay. Lisa finally made a clear decision on the show or somebody personal. Like, Lisa has made a clear decision on the show in this case. Where she's like, it's yeah. good for the show if you're a mess. Yes, please. Yes. Yeah. Of course. That's yes. Right. Yeah. It's why it's so funny for her to be like, you know, kind of scolding Raquel and Peter for being like, you know, like last episode, she was like, <laughs> Peter, the Me Too movement has happened. Goes, I'm like, she, okay. She, all right, Lisa. She, she, goes, like, <laughs> dude, she was like, in 2005, you would have gotten away with it. We used to have circle jerks everywhere. And so, uh, but now it just doesn't fly. Like, I was like, what is like that? You know, I used to put my finger in everybody's bums back then, but not anymore. And poor Peter's such a nerd where he's like, I'm sorry, Lisa, I guess I won't do that. And, you know, I, (laughs) well, I I feel, I feel, I feel so bad for Peter because it's, well, I feel the thing about Peter is like, what I think is that he's oblivious. So it's not, this doesn't hurt him as much as it hurts us to watch. Where I'm just like, yes. oh man, like Raquel literally came up to him and was like, hey man, I've been thinking, uh, I don't want to go any further with our relationship at all. Okay. Are you cool with that? And then there's a flashback to Lisa telling Peter, you know, Peter like, you can't fuck people. And he's like, yeah, I'm cool with that. And then she's like, oh really? Okay. And then this guy's, he's, I always say he's the only one that has to count. He has to actually work every night when the yeah, cameras yeah. aren't off. Like this guy is in there and I just, there's a part of me that's like, oh man, that Peter storyline's gone now. Like, we're not going to see Peter for the rest of the season. It's done. You know? He's like, all right. He's like, all right, I guess I, I better go make the schedule for next week. I yeah. Still have he's, a job like, here. Oh. he's like, well, I think one of our bartenders is stealing from the till, so I got to go take care of that. But uh, you guys have fun with the rest of filming, and I'll hopefully bring some shots around at the end of the reunion. So um see you then like this was his chance to like be on the show and he would like the first first episode when they go to hotel ziggy raquel's like all like shook because like ali's there and peter goes well i'm gonna get nice and drunk <laughs> you know he's like i don't have to work tomorrow i don't have to work tomorrow so i'm gonna get lit and I'm like, this is could you imagine being on like a like a, one of your first three dates and you're like i don't have to work tomorrow i'm gonna get fucking hammered like <laughs> yeah. yeah i'm not gonna know my name in about an hour bye like also peter is such a dork because raquel kept saying to him like hey like i'm just trying to be casual like i don't want this to be serious i just want this to be casual <laughs> he goes, and he, he goes i'm not gonna wear a suit I'm not gay. I'm going to keep it. I'm going to wear jeans. Like, oh no. He, he literally thought she meant the outfit and he's like, I'm going to get you those nachos. And she's like, what are nachos? You said you wanted nachos the other night and I'm going to go to the ends of the world to get you those nachos. Oh, okay. Um, cool. I guess like it is. And the thing is, you'd be like, oh, this is so set up. But the thing is, it's not set. Like this shit really I wish I could tell you that this is all like the shit that is made up is that like they know when they're going to film like DJ James Kennedy going yeah. in to pick up his check. He knows he's supposed to be there that day to do something, but yeah. it, he's not just casually strolling into Sir and there's cameras there. And he's like, Oh, cool. Like they know they're mic'd up all yeah. of that stuff. But the actual shit of like, like that is true about Peter and Raquel. That was true. <laughs> I, like this, uh, it's just why it blows my mind. Cause it would be so easy to go, Oh, that is totally fake. And it's scarier to go, Oh shit. That's totally real. <laughs> yes. Now you, you are a Los Angeles, uh, resident. You've yeah. been to these places. Yes. All of, all of mm. the Vanderpump, uh, uh, eateries. Oh, yeah. Which one is oh, yeah. your favorite? Uh, the alleyway at sir. Like that's like, there's like cheap food, <laughs> good ambiance. Um, like, no, no. Uh, well, I, you know, it's really like whatever's the new, like, I will tell you when Tom Tom first opened, I was like, holy shit, this is like a Michelin star restaurant. Like, I thought that was really, 
compared to like sir which i thought was like a shithole like after a while because it was like oh this is like your neighbor i don't know it my mom really likes sir actually i always thought and i will say this they used to only give you three uh, goat cheese balls per order. And then last <laughs> yeah. night I noticed they had four on the plate. I'm like, Ooh. did DJ James Kennedy get an extra one just because he's DJ James Kennedy? Or did they <laughs> finally take my note and stop doing the three cheese balls? Because it was ridiculous. But Tom Tom, I genuinely think there is some really good food at Tom Tom. And I will tell you, I, I ate and drank at Schwartz and Sandy's a couple of times. And that's actually really good too. It's just like a totally different uh, vibe. And but I, I think those two places are great. Sir is great just because of the history there. And if you ever come yeah. to Los Angeles, anybody go into the alleyway. Like that is like the funnest. Cause like there <laughs> is so much history there. If you love the show. Yeah. I I've only been to the Vanderpump gardens in Vegas and where I did get to have the goat cheese balls and the food was very disappointing. I was like, okay, this is fine. It's so expensive and so disappointing. Yeah. And I had a glass of Vanderpump Rosé there and it was served to me warm. I was like, this That's, is Vanderpump yeah. Gardens. <laughs> it's, it's, it's how we do it in Vegas. Are you kidding? There's not ice. Um <laughs> That's, I mean, I will tell you, they have like the pump, like pump teeny, you know, like when he, yeah. James yelled out at Jax. I have never, I've had some of the worst hangovers of my life on a <laughs> pump teeny. Cause what you do, you would go to like, you would go to pump at like happy hour and they would do like $7 pump teenies or whatever. And that yeah. thing is straight sugar and it goes down <laughs> really easy. And it is so whatever. It's like, there's gotta be aluminum in there or something. It's like, there's like, I'm probably... <laughs> I'm probably radioactive at this point, but, <laughs> but it's, listen, all of those places are fun. All of those, like the Schwartz and Sandys confuses me because it's like, also like I, I made a meme about this yesterday of like Greg, their other owner. Like yeah. there was a scene like yet yeah, last week's episode where Greg and Lisa, Greg's like, these guys are shit for brains. Like <laughs> I caught them, I caught them putting their dicks in bottles. I don't even know what they're doing. And I'm like, and Lisa's like, hey, your problem now, Greg. And it's like, what are you guys doing? Lisa F you and Greg F you. Greg, watch the show then do your research. If you went into business yeah. with these people and we're like all of a sudden you're bad mouthing your own bar on national television, like, yeah. and then Lisa going like, oh, they don't know how to do anything. I will tell you like, Sandoval's a really good, good bartender. And a, like, I, mm -hmm. I, those are the scenes where I'm like, I hope this is fake. Cause I, I like, that's unconscionable. Like you're opening a place and you're like, literally has the whole scene where the two people that have like hired these people in the past are just complaining nonstop about them. It was so yeah. weird. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I don't know. I, I will say Sandoval drives me crazy. Um, but he is, definitely i would say he's the most hardworking person on this show like i'd say ariana too yeah. but i just yeah ariana and sandoval both are super duper hardworking. like you could tell that they are yeah hustling. and honestly sheena sheena's a hustler too sheena's a hustler yeah <laughs> i think sand well see ariana i think here's you know ariana is the most sane person on that show period. Yeah. Like yeah, it's yeah, the yeah. most mm -hmm. sane person on the show. She gets it. She gets how, uh, you know, she gets how people look at Sandoval, but she also loves it. Like, and also I love Sandoval because Sandoval has what I wish I like, see, I can never fault people when they have passion, when they live their life yeah. with passion. And they're like, I I've always dreamt of doing a band. I'm going to do a band. Like you can make fun of stuff like that, but at the end of the day, He's done it. And at the end of the day, it's really like he made this a reality when everybody has made fun of that from the get go. And I got to tell you, mm -hmm. it's a really damn entertaining show. And he's one of those people that makes weird dreams realities. And he totally wants things to be the best that they can be, you know, and Ariana, yeah. on the other hand, I think is like smart as a whip. She can put things into, uh, she put she can she knows how to speak in a way that Tom Sandoval doesn't, and that's where mm -hmm. I think they complement each other. Is because Sandoval mm -hmm. will sometimes uh, say some reactionary things, and he doesn't know the necessarily the right words. Where Ariana knows the right words, Ariana can like give you like Ariana can nail you if she wants. Like that one of the last episodes when Jax was on, when she just nailed Jax, she was like, "Listen, I don't believe you." Like you can like. You know, yeah. he's like, sorry for making fun of your like your mental health, but I'm going through mental health. I think there's a hole yeah. in my brain. And she's like, yeah, Good luck. yeah, yeah. I hope you get help. But like, I don't believe, you know, she's able to call it as it is. 
Um, mm-hmm. And I think she lives in the real world. And that's why sometimes I get like, I, I sometimes get, I, I want Ariana to have a, the, the best storyline ever, but at the same time, she's not going to cheat. She's not going to yeah. like, they they don't have an open relationship. They don't like, there's these things where I'm like, Oh, how does this, I don't know. She's one of those people I really root for on that show. I think that I love Ariana on it because you need that one person who has like some common sense, like on the show to just be like, "Mm, no, no, that was a crazy thing that you did, Sheena. Like even for her to say like, yeah, Sheena, that's like not great. I understand the perspective. Like I like, I feel like you need that person there always on a show. I almost feel like that is sometimes Danielle on Summer House. So like, I, I, I love Ariana on the show of like shit bags being like the one person who's like pretty normal um, on the topic of Tom Sandoval. So I mentioned to you on your podcast, I just finished the Sopranos Artie Bucco on the Sopranos. If you've ever watched Sopranos, he's the man who owns the studios, the <laughs> restaurant. It's Tony's yeah. like childhood friend, right? There is nobody on like TV. I could ever compare to anybody else except for t- Tom Sandoval with that compare. Like, Artie Bucco is just the perfect Tom Sandoval because he is passionate about his food. He talks way too fucking much. He thinks he's like a badass, but like will definitely get his ass kicked and like his earrings ripped out of his head. Like he is like, that's the best comparison to make with Tom Sandoval because like he really, and he's like, a, he's like loyal. He's loyal to his shit. Dude, that friends. guy in like, Vegas, the first season ripped his shirt off right along with Jax's chunky sweater. He was like, I'm in. <laughs> Let's beat this guy up. Let's uh, like, I mean, that's, that is the kind of passion he lives his life by. And I think, I don't know, like, at least I feel like he's doing things with that. And like, I, yeah. I, I'm totally, um, uh, what's that? I, I, I don't have, like, I, I'm friendly with them and, and sometimes, so I don't really have perspective. Like I do some, like, I genuinely think they're good people. So it's hard yeah. for me to ever shit on them now. But these are things yeah. that I genuinely like them for, even on the show, is the same reasons I've liked them when I've been around them. And it doesn't, uh, but also at the same time, I always have this overwhelming, uh, I really go into this place of thinking about these shows of like, how much of a prison is this show for these guys? You know, is that mm-hmm. like how... Mm-hmm. Once uh, asked Sandoval of like, oh, you know, well, you know, are you scared about what's next? And, you know, he, he you know, he was like, dude, like, yeah, we got, I have a house to pay for. I've got this, you know, like he had the, always a slight little lift, I think. But he, uh, <laughs> he, he, he's like, dude, of course I'm acting like he's worried about Schwartz. He's worried about Ari. Like he's, he wants, the, he knows how lucky he is to be in this position. Mm-hmm. And uh, in a lot of ways, they won a lottery. Like he came out here to be an actor, a musician. And now reality star has taken over a lot of what, you know, like people come to LA now to be reality stars. It's like completely Mm -hmm. changed. Like act like now that influencers exist, it's kind of wiped out what everybody used to come to LA for. And that's to be an actor. I think one thing that Tom Sandoval has done right is that he's maintained kind of just like himself on the show and then his side projects, but like nobody really knows about like, like he's not really on social media He's not really doing like, yeah, he doesn't, he interviews. doesn't check. He doesn't check his social media. He doesn't like, he'll rarely like post like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like not really online. So I think that he's been able to kind of lean into this cringy job he got as this cringy person on this sort of cringy reality show. And he's maintained that to some degree. And I think it's actually brilliant. Like he managed to make himself inaccessible even though he is a reality TV star and every reality TV star is very accessible online. They're very online. They're very available. And we all feel like we know them. Tom Sandoval has managed for us to just know him from the show. Like that's yeah. it. That's all we But the thing also, is, I feel like even if, yeah. if he was on social media, he would be the same way that we know him on the show. Yes. Like he's yeah, yeah, not yeah. like a, he's not a character. Like that really is him. Yes, yes. Uh, fun fact about him is that he did block me on Instagram. What did you? S- wow! What did you say? <laughs> oh my god! Wow! This Reveal. Is, this is ages ago, and it was my personal Instagram. And this is like ages ago, and this is like. And I, did, I started- said, like, you're a piece of shit, and like no, he took I that. Didn't. He took I offense know. to that, I guess. I don't know. So I um. It was like right when you could post like a 10 second video on Instagram, right? Like it was just like when videos on Instagram started 
And he posted a video of himself doing a slow motion high kick, which is funny because he did a beautiful high kick on this episode, but he did a slow motion high kick. And I tagged my friend in it, my best friend, one of my best friends, Allie, I tagged her in it and I said, LOL, he's the worst. Now I meant this in a loving way, right? (laughs) I will say, when you you LOL on something, I feel like the joke is, oh my God, he's the worst. But like, like, I'm saying this because I love him. And he, he I have to tell me. you, but like, uh, come on, LOL, he's the worst. I don't look okay. at LOL. I always look at he is the worst. I, I've been told I am the worst. So I always like that is the overwhelming thing that you go to. Not the, <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm like funny worst. Like I don't even. Like, <laughs> but I also like the picture. So it was like, I was like, come on, Tom Sandoval. Like I did it. And it was just like, I know that there's people who say way worse stuff about him. Right. So like, I didn't think that he would take that seriously, but yes, he blocked me. On my, so my personal no, responded Instagram, back. Come on. There's people say way worse about you. This is nothing. Like, are you kidding me? Yeah. I mean, I uh, talked it, about him so much today, so hopefully it gets to him and he unblocks me at some point, but this it is, is like funny. easily like eight years ago. <laughs> have you seen those people online that have like really take like, you know, because Tom has had some questionable looks each season because he lit- mm-hmm. he legitimately tries to bring in a new look each season. You know, he is like the David Bowie of Vanderpump Rules. And like yes. this, this look has a lot of girls going like, is Sandoval hot again? Like, yeah, I've heard I've seen girls going, wow, like, is this actually working? Like, they really like this look. Yeah, I think um, the mustache has really like umped up his manliness because I think that the issue that a lot of people had before, and I never had an issue with it because I think Tom Sandoval is very attractive. Um, is well, be also, but guys, he's the worst. <laughs> Listen, I didn't mean it in a bad way. You, okay, <laughs> lol. I think Tom's very attractive. Lol, <laughs> he's the worst. Yeah. <laughs> so, so Tom, like, I have always thought he was really attractive, but I think, like, I like I like a more feminine man. Like, I like a softer man, and I think that a lot of people didn't like that about him. Like, he used to like shave his face and get like his forehead and like get Botox yeah. and like talk about his skincare. And I think people didn't like that. I think what people like about him this season is that he's got this like mustache, and he's like the only person who's responsible on the show, and so I think that also helps. And this episode, I saw him without a shirt on. I was like, holy fuck, he's ripped. Yeah, like, he's all ripped. What? Like, dude, I, I he <laughs> looks amazing. I was, I went, I, I, when I interviewed him last, I went over to their house and like, he then gave me a tour. Like this guy wanted to have this be a good podcast so much. Like it started at eight and I didn't get out of there until two. Like I had to be like, Tom, I got to leave, dude. Like eventually, cause he was like, well, I want to show, he started showing me dinosaur bones at the end. He was like, this is from Game of Thrones. Like, uh, cause I was like, he was showing me all these Vanderpump props. Like I got to see like, you know, all of this stuff. And I was like fucking geeking out so hard, but he, they have a full mini exercise room in one of the rooms and it's all like lit up. And he's like, I start every day here. I'm doing, cr-. I'm just like, this dude is like determined. Cause And that's another thing with Kyle, like Kyle, like, you know, all these people that work out at the summer house, I'm like, it makes me feel so bad about myself. Cause if I have like (laughs) two, like, I'm not even drinking beer. If I drink a cider, I'm not, I'm not like looking to get up at eight and like start my day. Right. I've never (laughs) wanted to start my day. Right. And it's like always upsetting to watch these people like, you know, work hard, play hard. Well, listen, Tom Sandoval, LOL, you're the best. (laughs) I love that you're like, I was confused though. I was pretty nice. And I'm like, you literally wrote, you're the worst, but you put like a proverbial JK, JK. Like, and he's, by the way, you? you're like, <laughs> you also started this by going, he's really not online anymore at all. I wonder why. He's like, <laughs> literally like, uh, the last time I was on, I saw LOL, you're the worst. And I just, I've never gone back. Oh like, <laughs> Imagine that was like his like reason for like not being online anymore. And he's like, this one bitch from New Jersey yeah. once called me <laughs> the worst. Oh man. Tom Sandoval, every time he's sing- every time he's singing, he's just seeing that comment. LOL, you're the worst. Every time he's performing, he's always just seeing your comment. <laughs> yeah. Like, who's the worst oh now? My God. <laughs> who's the worst now? I know. I'm sorry, Tom Sandoval. Oh, God. Wait, can All we right. also well, talk let's... about really quick the, the, the people like yeah. the, the 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 double date, the double kind of date with oh, Katie oh, and Lala? Oh, yes. Where okay. they're like these two hot guys, and then they show the guy's internet stuff, and he's literally humping dumbbells. He's like, oh, oh, oh. And I'm like, <laughs> It's you so didn't crazy. know right then and there that that wasn't going to be great. Yeah. Also, Mel 
uh, Mel being rebranded to Melrose is quite the rebrand. Like, you don't get to call yourself Melrose if your name is Mel, my friend. Like, come on. Who did that for you? Because that's crazy. Well, that's like Lala wanting to, like, rebrand as La Cienega, which is another street in Los Angeles. <laughs> of like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm La Cienega. Like, there's no... <laughs> I mean, if we were like, also, what a great way as a kid and somebody sober, like, you know, bringing somebody into your life that wants to go around as Melrose as a grown adult. Like, he's like, yeah, man, like, why don't I like, it's like if this day forward, I would be like, hey, um, would you call me Batman during this interview? Would you introduce me as Batman? Would that be cool? Like, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I'm. Yeah, that'd be cool. <laughs> I love it. All right. Let's let's go over to the Hamptons summer house. Um, you know, this was July 4th weekend and this was the first summer house, uh, July 4th weekend that was like surprisingly kind of (laughs) dead. I was like, what the hell is this? Yeah. I I said about the first episode, like I liked this second episode so much more than the first episode. I thought it had so much to talk about in it, but I will say the first episode where I was like, wait, we're like going to bed on a Saturday night at like 10 30, 11. Like what's going on? I said, Summer House this season seems to be like if you if you're a fan of doing your taxes, you'll love Summer House. It's like super <laughs> mellow. It's like I mean, but then this this week picked up so much more and I kind of really dug it. But yeah, it's a yeah. way more mellow environment. Very mellow. They went to the beach. Um, Chris, one of the new guys, he's a big dork, but he has really hot, hot friends, which is ridiculous. Like you should never do yeah. that. You should never try to sell yourself as a hot guy by bringing around hotter friends, Chris. Um, Gabby is hot for this guy, Jerez, who is so hot, but then rejects him based on his horoscope. Right. That was, that was really amazing. That was really amazing. Actually. Like for Gabby to be like, yo, um, it's okay. You don't have to like, I know I'm right. But anyways, it's great talking to you. Like that is so like, that made me so mad, but also at the same time, it made me love her so much. Cause I'm one of those dudes that's like, I don't want astro Like, I don't want to be judged by my astrology. You know, I'm like, that's so, yeah. cause that guy was like, literally. Like, and she's like, no, nah, I'm not going to do that to myself. I know you're bad. Like, that's what you, she's like, you don't need to try to convince me. I know I'm right. Like, that's wild. Like just shut him down. I mean, that is a big power move to like go up to a man who has probably gotten used to constantly having women falling yeah. all over him and her yeah. being like, you're amazing. But let me tell you something. I'm going to arguing with you and tell you that I'm rejecting you for something that you can never like debate with me. I'm telling you right now, your sign is bad. We're done here. I was like, wow, that is amazing. Now, what is your sign, Ryan? Taurus. All right. Hey, earth signs. I'm a Virgo. So I see you. What I always like, whenever you say stuff like that, I'm like, okay, earth sign. Yeah, sure. I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't, I, <laughs> yeah, man. Like, I don't, I, I, that's what I said. Like, if I, like someday, <laughs> I always say like, if, if heaven exists, if heaven exists, like I want to really learn astrology. Cause I feel like I'll have the time. <laughs> no, like, cause like who has the time to like go. And then you always have to text your mom what time you were born. And I said, like, <laughs> I did a whole rant this week. I said, like, what if the doctor fucking lied on the piece of paper? What if the doctor lied and goes, Oh, you know what? I think it was six thirty six. Let's put six thirty six. And it was actually six forty two. Then your whole thing, you've been like going, if you're really into astrology, your whole thing is a house of lies, you know? Like, how do we yeah. know? Like, I want to believe in this stuff, but I also just want people to just tell me. Like, I I'll, I want to be rich enough to just be like, tell me what I am. Tell me who I am and how to do it, you know? Yeah, yeah. What uh, my sister in law is a literal was like rocket scientist she's like an astrophysicist like she has a phd she's a you know she's an actual brilliant human being and i was like so astrology it's a little bit true right and she was like no not a chance she's like see it's exactly i was that person that would, like as a kid i would read the this is as far as i went with astrology like there you like in the paper i i remember growing up in kansas or like there used to be a thing in the like where it would really quickly tell you like taurus and it'd be like uh, you're going to meet a friend this week. Leave possibilities, <laughs> leave, leave the possibility, yeah. be open. And I'd be like, wow, okay. Like that's where I ended with astrology. I was like, looked at the newspaper. They just said, you're a Taurus. This is you. And I was like, yeah. okay, that's cool. But other than that, yeah, like, our paper everybody- was like, yeah, our paper was like the movie times, the horoscopes, the crosswords and the comics were like all around the same part. And I'd be like, this is all I'm going to read today. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I mean, none of it is true. I will say this. None of it I think is like actually true, but it's so fun. And anytime somebody's like, 
you know, like White Lotus was on and there was like, these are your moons and yeah. your suns and your uh, risings. And I was like, yeah, that's me. Like, I <laughs> I don't believe it. But if if it, if it anything slightly um, backs up a thought that I've had in the past, I'm like, yeah, see, it's it's true. It's because I'm like, I had. I've had this girl on multiple times, uh, uh, Lisa Kelly, or I I always say her name wrong, but she's like a really well-known astrologer and I'll have her on. And like the way she speaks about it's so beautiful. And the way she like, you know, like it makes me want to believe in this stuff, but also the knowledge she has. Like I always am at this point of like, I won't be able to ever be as knowledgeable as you Mm -hmm. are. So why am I going to even, cause she'll like, I begin and end as like Taurus. Like then now all of a sudden, I guess you have to know you're rising and you're dissenting and all of like all of this other, (laughs) stuff that goes with i'm like who has the time like why i thought it was just taurus like the one thing and now you have to know three things to know you're (laughs) accurate what what is going on in your body you know yeah yeah somebody will be like your gemini moon is coming up and i'm like i don't know what that means what does that mean my mom's best friend is actually an astrologer and she's like well known and she's like She's from Pakistan and she was like a celebrity astrologer there. And she had like politicians that like worked with her and like, she's a big deal. And she's like done my reading a couple of times. And the one time she did mine was like, I think it was like in my early twenties. I like just finished college. It was kind of like working. My mom really wanted me to get married. And so she told me that like, she was like, you know, your relationship moon or whatever is like opening up. And like this year is going to be the year that for you to like figure that out. And, like, that is the year that I, like, started dating my husband and, like, we got married, like, three years later or whatever. And I, like, saw her last summer and I was like, did you just fucking say that shit to me? Because, like, my mom told you that, like, it's time for me to get married. And she was like. (laughs) Let me present. Let me present this theory. Do you love your husband? Or did you just get married to him because you wanted the astrology to be right? Like, that's oh the other God. thing to think about, you know? Oh did that God. get planted in your head? And you're like, well, I guess I got to go now because the astrology, that's what I don't want to. And are you allowed, if you do something wrong and you get arrested and all that, and they tell you like, why'd you do this? Can you be like, well, I'm a Taurus. Like, I mean, like, can you say that as like, well, I'm a Taurus. And they're like, oh, I get it now. Okay. That totally makes sense. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. Like you're totally, that's your birth. That's your moon and all that stuff. This is like me as a very old person. I feel like talking about younger people, but I feel like maybe in like 40 years, maybe like two more generations, it can be used in the court of law. Like I think our no, that's where we're that's like, where we're headed. By the way, that's where we're, we're the Murdoch trial is going to be all. Uh, well, he's a moon sign, Your Honor. It's not. Yeah, yeah. Mercury was in retrograde. So yeah. Why did you kill these people? Well, it was, oh, was your Mercury Gatorade? Okay, I got it. No, yeah. <laughs> Iterating. All right. Okay. Back to Summer House. And by so- the way, I do want to apologize to your audience one more time. I know I'm over talking you guys. I'm just so excited. No, so I just want to apologize again. I understand that I potentially am being annoying. No, what? Ryan, what are you talking? No, no, no Ryan, I just like to you always. Are not, I, I'm a, you are I, not I usually, LOL the I'm like worst. going off. Yeah. No, no, oh, no. Wait, no, wait. No. Wait, Sheena just texted. Oh, so sorry that didn't work. I'm extra. Okay. Oh, that was nice. <laughs> okay. Nice, so. Sheena. Yeah. <laughs> all right all right back to summer house um so the other thing that happened at the beach is that maya and and carl or sorry maya and kyle have conversations with Lindsay and carl let's talk about the maya and Lindsay conversation first it goes very poorly <laughs> yeah two conversations that shouldn't have happened at all because not and, and it's like the it's the second week in a row that maya's been led astray by somebody like the first one was like Paige, like I think you definitely should talk to Carl. That will be a very good conversation. And like, I feel like Paige totally knew that would be horrible. And then this, you know, Kyle's just like, yeah, let's face our demons together. You talk to Lindsay, I'll talk to Carl. And like, I think we all knew like, that's not going to go good either. Like the, it's just not good. No, no. And like, everybody's been drinking and it's hot and like drinking but on the beach with like the sun. This is like not going to go well. You've got sand in places like this is just not going to be a good time. I'm glad that like the Maya Lindsay conversation started off really poorly. And then when Maya called Lindsay a bitch and she suddenly realized like, oh, fuck, I've activated Lindsay. I need to backtrack this and like fix this. She's like, let's try this again. (laughs) Okay, here's Lindsay. (laughs) Lindsay could have gone so much harder than she did. Like I, when that yes. bitch thing came out, I was like, and I like Maya a lot, but I was mm-hmm. like, yo, and then she'd be like, well, I call all my friends that. And Lindsay was like, we're not friends. You said we're not friends. Like Lindsay yes. was like, yes. Lindsay was so weirdly calm 
And it was, I was scared for Maya for a second. And then I'll, but also I really like Maya, but come on. Maya was so at it. She's like, Oh, I'm such a big problem. Know, like I Maya know. was really like pushing her. And yeah. I feel like Lindsay and Carl, somebody said this to me the other day and I haven't used it yet, but I was like, Lindsay and Carl, there's a little bit of like Megan and Harry in there. <laughs> You know, like they're obviously in love with each other. Like they're like calling each other my love and my love. And it's kind of gross for some of us to watch, but like you, they're genuinely in love. What are you going to do? Like mm -hmm. they genuinely, and they find strength with each other. Like this is yes. what a positive relationship should be, but it's going to make, be so annoying for everybody else. And I've, I find it really hard because I like I just don't think this season will set them up for success because they keep talking about their wedding and like Carl was on and he said, I, I want our wedding to be filmed potentially. And I'm like, at this point, who's going to go to it? Like, who's going to go to your wedding? Like he, he then I was like, do you want Kyle to officiate? And he was like, no, I don't think so. I don't you know, just because he, you know, I officiated his he, it doesn't mean he has to officiate mine. And then he yeah. said he wanted Captain Lee to officiate. And like it was actually I don't know, but I felt. I just feel, uh, I feel like they're, it's just going to keep getting worse. I, I like, I mean, at the end, like Kyle said, he was on blow at like, at like on TV about his, his company that he runs. Also, yeah. why does, why does Kyle not have desktop computers? If you don't bring your computer, like if <laughs> Carl was so on blow, you didn't bring his laptop. You're telling me you don't have desktops. You're like, sorry, we're shit out of luck here. You got to go home, Carl. Yeah. Yeah. Also, like last week, that girl, Sam, was like, I get 10,000 steps in the first thing Dude, I do when I wake up in the morning. Me. And then I work and then I go to the club until 2 a.m. I was like, and are you also doing coke? Because why? How is that happening, ma'am? Like, it can't just be that you're 25. Well, I was 25 not so long ago. It's not because you're 25, sister. Now, I'm not saying that Sam does coke. All right. Let's just, let's just set the right. No, no, no. I, I could, it, it could be Adderall. It could be some kind yeah. of methamphetamine. Like, it's not coke, but it could be something else. Like, um, I want I want there to be an old version for older people like myself where like, cause then I was like, once she said that 10,000 steps thing as like an owner of a Fitbit, I was like, I want a step counter now. I want a Sam step counter where like, did you do your 10,000 before noon on the week? Like how, cause it didn't seem like she was go, go, going. So I want to yes. know if that, cause I'll see little things like that. I'll hear it and I'll be like, I'll take it as gospel and I'll be pissed. Cause I don't live my life like that. And then I'm like, is she really getting those steps in? So what I, I, I'm going to like, I just followed her recently on Instagram. Like I think Wednesday of next week, I'm going to go, Hey, did you get your 10 K in at like noon? I'm going to just start leaving <laughs> comments and like, where are you at stepwise? Cause I'm like, that's the thing that sticks with me about Sam is like, are you really doing this shit? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to find holes in your story, ma'am. If you're going to talk about your steps, just um, tell me you've okay. only done 4,000. I know that like you've only done 4,000. It's like, don't just tell me that. Like you're setting up, it's not even unfair beauty standards. It's unfair exercise standards. Like this is not cool. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, so Kyle and Carl have this chat also. Carl essentially tells Kyle that he's burnt out and he kind of wants to quit Loverboy, but Kyle takes it as he for he thinks it's he's like, is this bullshit? And then he also thinks that Lindsay is like Lady Macbeth, she's in his ear. And he says this thing about Lindsay in the confessional. He's like, you know, Lindsay's bored on the couch saying you work too much. And I was like, Oh, I see what Kyle's doing. Kyle is Kyle is taking his relationship with Amanda and projecting it onto Carl. So Carl's saying, hey, I'm a little bit burnt out. He's like, oh, your girlfriend must be telling you to hang out with her. And I'm like, yeah, I think, I, I mean, even if she is, yeah. like, that's what, that's what Amanda told you to well, do and then you didn't do it. And now you might be mad that Kyle might be, or Carl might be doing the same thing, like, except, or Lindsay might be doing the same thing to Carl, except Carl is actually listening to his girlfriend. Like, that's really I, yeah, the problem, well, is it? That I do yeah. have to point out, people seem to forget that last season or maybe the season, Kyle was like, what do you do all day, Amanda? Like you do the like yes. shirts, but like, so he was, she yeah. was, he was on her about a similar thing. I will say in Kyle's defense, this could have, this could have all been talked about without the mention of Coke or anything like that. Yeah. Is that 
Listen, numbers don't lie. And it sounds like yes. Carl might not be the best salesperson. Um, yes. But that's what I think that he was trying to say too, is like, we've made this position. So you are the face of lover boy. So we can like, you're what you're good at. And yeah. at the end of the day, I just don't think Carl wants to do this. Like, and, but there was a lot of things I've like Carl going like, oh yeah, I was working on an email with bullet points to set. Like, you know, that's like me going like, yeah, I had an Excel spreadsheet I was going to send you. I'm like really deep in it. Like I'm, so, I'm working so hard. Like, like, so th- there, it's such I was bullshit. like, yeah. And that's what I was like. Cause I really like Carl and I really like Kyle. Kyle really had some horrible, horrible problematic moments because Carl's also doing that thing where he's like, he wants to make himself a better person. And he's one of the only people on Bravo that's done it, you know, and yeah. that could fall away at any point. But for Kyle, it's like, I, I was just like, Oh, this friendship is effed. Like, cause I don't see how Carl hears that about himself. And I don't doubt that it's true, but if you're going to start talking about drug stuff, everybody on Bravo is screwed. Like if we're going to start being honest about like Southern charms, F Vanderpump rules oh, yeah. is that like, and I don't doubt that it's true, but you know, not to say that stuff on, you could allude to it. You could be just like, you Oh, he was so messed pasta. up. <laughs> yeah. That's what I said. I said, we yeah. use the Bravo word pasta. Like Carl was so pasted out. Like one time at work that he like, um, I don't know, but Carl, it seems like it might not be a good fit for either of them, but this yeah. is why you don't work with friends. You know, you just get yourself in this weird situation where it becomes personal really quickly. Yeah. Kyle also is really obsessed with blaming Lindsay, which is like really my biggest uh, gripe with Kyle. Like it's one thing, like, first of all, yes, you hired Carl where we had seen him for like three seasons or four seasons, genuinely being a bad employee. Like that was Carl's, one of his storylines, like on yeah. Summer House for seasons was, yeah. it's summer, it's I'm Carl 2.0 because this time I'm trying another job because I lost my job. Like Carl is unhirable. Carl is not. And like Carl would come back to the city and he wouldn't be able to show up at work. Like, and then they would like find out the next week of like, Carl didn't even show up to work when he got, we got home, you know? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So we know that Carl is possibly a shitty employee and that's one thing, right? But Kyle keeps blaming Lindsay for Carl being a shitty employee while at the same time also saying that Carl is a shitty employee. Like, I think that essentially what happened is Carl began checking out of work, probably because of a million reasons, potentially because he's a bad employee, but also because he is a sober person working for an alcohol brand and he is probably burnt out. And also he said it on the show. This is not his dream. This is Kyle and Amanda's dream. And he is just working with them because he got an opportunity that worked out. And he He got that opportunity when he was a not sober person. He got that opportunity and it probably really saved him. But you are allowed to grow past jobs, friends. And that's why I think it hurts because we've done that in our lives too. And I, you see yeah. that and you're like, cause I see that and I'm like, Oh, I want their friendship so badly because I've had friendships that have fallen apart. I've had, you know, and you're yeah. like, Oh, that sucks. I want, I want them to be such good friends. And like, it's so weird because in the reality, it's like Vanderpump rules. Like nobody's meant to still work at a, you know, nobody, nobody's meant to still hang out with the same bar backs and bartenders you did 12 years ago. <laughs> it's just not, pe- you yeah, Peter's like, I'm still here. Um, <laughs> but other than that, it's like, that's why these shows are weird because we put weird, um, we, we want these weird things that don't exist in real life for something that's reality. Yes. Like yeah. friendships have seasons, you know, friendships like, yeah. you know, they might not be friends right now and they might come together three years from now and go, what the fuck? What, what, what kind of weird ride did we go on? Like now that the show's over, you know, what was that? Like they'll, they'll learn about themselves throughout life and, and maybe be able to check in at some other point, but I don't know, like, it's going to get bad. Like if this is where we're at, you know, because I'm just thinking like, how did Carl respond to this? Cause if he didn't know this was going to air, how was this week for Carl? I mean, I wonder if Danielle told him because this is the other heartbreak story that we are leaning into here. This episode, when Kyle is going on this rampage, by the way, Kyle talking about how Carl is so fucked up while also being fucked up. He's got some nerve. Kyle has been slurring on Summer House the minute that he steps into that house. Like, and look, everybody's allowed to have like a great weekend and like get drunk or whatever. But it's he drinks so much that his own wife when she was his fiance was like i'm not going to marry you because you drink too fucking much so let's just like relax with the you know throwing stones from your glass house but kyle is going on this rampage and danielle is 
ferociously eavesdropping and chewing on those french fries the way any good, good for friend her. would yeah uh, it was so beautiful to see her step in and like basically tell kyle that he's fucked up for doing this but it was heartbreaking to know that she's not friends with them anymore and i'm like yeah that's the bigger heartbreak that i'm like see that, that really that- worried about well, that's what's happening. I think I always talk a lot about um, social media on the show now, you know, on my show, because mm-hmm. social media has changed how these shows play out now because we know the ending. And so we're watching knowing the ending already. Like we know that Danielle thing. We know, yeah. you know, we know all these things ahead of time. So it kind of puts this other layer of drama on it because we're like, oh, no, like. Daniel's being such a good friend even here. And we know this all falls apart. We know it before we even see it. And those are some of those really like, I don't know how Bravo gets a hold of this or like gets a, gets to rein this in because it's so rampant. Like we already know what happens on ultimate girls trip in like two seasons from now. Cause Brandy's going to like, do <laughs> like we already know this. So yeah. it puts this weird pressure on it. But like, if that that friendship it breaks my heart because she was friends with both of them and she stands up for both of them. Danielle is that fr- like Danielle like the last couple of seasons. I used to kind of like didn't know the purpose of Danielle on this show, and now it's just like yeah. she's so good on this show. She seems like such a great person, um, and I'm gonna be really I'm gonna be really bummed out to see how this all goes down. You know? Yeah, yeah. I think that. What I can probably guess, and this is, okay, going back to your point of like, what do we do when we already know the ending? It's, you know, it's like, um, I don't know. It's kind of like watching, you know, one of those movies where they like show the, or, you know, they show the end. It, well, like, let me pause. You know, those seasons of Housewives where like you start off the season with like a big fight and then it's like six months earlier. And then it goes to like, you see the story of like how you got there. I think that's. Yeah kind of how I'm viewing this happen with Danielle and everything. And I, and, it, and it's actually, it's very compelling because it breaks my heart. Like it is that feeling that you talked about of like that feeling that you get when you're like watching a show or watching a person. I am getting really sad feelings already watching like Danielle and Lindsay and Carl like br- have brunch together. And even Danielle saying like, yeah, Kyle should pay Carl more for what he does because he just doesn't feel valued. Like, it's okay. He wants to get paid for his work. Like, her talking so sensibly to Kyle while he's, like, very drunk, I just, it breaks my heart because she, this woman took a glass, a wine glass to the chest for Lindsay. Yes. That's a, and then Kyle was like, I, 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 it's so loud in here. You shouldn't have heard that. Like, he was like, well, how, what? It's so loud. Like, and by the way, that was another weird thing. Like from the moment he sat down, he's like, it's so loud in here. I was like, is this a setup? Because why do we keep talking about how loud it is? And then he looked like she was like a, a, a witch. She looked like a witch or something. He was like, how did you hear that? It's so loud in here. How did you hear that? And she's like, he, he wanted to argue about her be hearing it in the first place when she was like, no, about what you said. Yeah. But how'd you hear it? How did you hear it? Like, you, it's so loud. Like, you shouldn't yes. have heard that. Like, wh- I don't know what she was expecting from Danielle of like, oh, I apologize. It doesn't count then. I'll just be quiet. You know, like I yeah. shouldn't have heard that. You're right. Yeah. What do you think about Kyle thinking that, you know, Lindsay's in Carl's ear? Um, I, about Lindsay and Carl. Wait, are you, did you, you said the Lady Macbeth thing. Um, did Kyle say Lady Macbeth or did you say Lady no, Macbeth? I said it. <laughs> Okay, because like this whole time I've been thinking about it since you said that. And I'm like, did I miss that? And also, did Kyle read no. Macbeth? Like this whole time I was like, holy no. shit, this dude's reading Macbeth. That one girl's getting 10,000 steps. Like I've got to like, <laughs> I was like, no, 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 I no, thought no, no. like I read Shakespeare. The fact that Kyle reads, I'm like, oh man, like, um, okay. Because that was such a great reference. And I was like, did Kyle say that? Like, that's weird. <laughs> He's like, it's a classic Midsummer Night's Dream here at the Summer House. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would be great if he quoted a different Shakespeare thing each episode. Um, <laughs> well, Lin- Lindsay and Carl's here. Hey, welcome to relationships. Like, yes. it's what it is. Like, you talk to your partner. If you're doing it right, you share things with your partner. And if you're also in the correct kind of relationship, your partner goes, I love you. I want the best for you. How do we get to that to happen? 
You know, like yeah. that's it. Like, I don't know why Lindsay's all like, you know, how dare her. Um, yeah. But at the same time, like, I understand, like, this is a startup. I have, I have a feeling Loverboy has the ch- chance of being a huge, huge company one day and selling, you know, I really, really do. And so I understand the stress that I'm sure Kyle is on and this really is his and Amanda's dream. Um, but I, it's just gotta be, I don't know. It's, it's, uh, I understand both sides. I just think Kyle's handling it in a completely wrong way, which is Kyle. That's what Kyle yes. does every yes. season. This is not mm-hmm. new. It's just sad because he's doing it with people we liked when he was doing it with Hannah. I was like, hell yeah, Kyle, get in there, brother. <laughs> like, hell yeah. Like, yes. Yes. <laughs> On your episode with Kyle, Kyle was like, you know, I wouldn't even mind like squashing my beef with like Hannah and just like having a conversation with her one day. And you were like, no, do not fucking do that. <laughs> You're like, Dude, there's no reason Hannah needs to. And I agree with you. There's no ne- reason oh, Hannah needs but to come see, back on Summer House. That's it exactly, though, is that like think about the landscape away from the show in which these people are like, you know, of course he would say Hannah, because guess what? Um he hangs out with Paige, you know, off season because yeah. of Amanda. Amanda likes Paige. Paige, of course, likes Hannah. Like, I do think Hannah will eventually come back on one day because it's more in the reality of how they live their lives. I also like Kyle. Kyle didn't say anything bad about Luke, but I got the vibe that he was like, oh, yeah, Luke's great. But he's on Winter House. And like, because I said, oh, I want Luke to come back. And he was like, oh, he wasn't bad mouthing. But you, you kind of get the sense when you talk to somebody. It's like I had Kyle on two times in the last month. The first was for traders that peacock mm-hmm. show. And, th- and then the first time I, I slid in a couple summer house questions at the very end and go, Hey, how are you and Carl? Da, da, da. Cause I saw the, the preview for the season and he was like, Oh, everything's good. But like the way he said it, I walked away from that interview going like, Oh, I don't think Carl works at lover boy anymore. And I thought oh, there's wow. like a month because the way the way he said it and the way he looked while he was saying it, he was like, uh, you know, and he was kind of looking around and then he was like, everything's good. Everything's good. And uh, I got the sense then that something was like wrong. But uh, yeah, I, I have a feeling if you're going to like check about the reality of those situations, Hannah probably does have a good chance to come back at this point. I would guess. Wow. Wow. You're like a, you're like a expert body language. Yeah. You're like a body language. No, but like, you know, like when you're no, like you're the same, we're all the same way. Like you can tell that's the other thing. It's like astrology where somebody will be like, um, I'm, I'm, uh, I was born, uh, what was it? They're always like, not empathetic, but, um, I pick up, what is that, that word where you're like, I, I pick up on vibes. I pick up other people's energies. Yeah. Like that, like I pick up on, I, I just, I'm just that way. Like I pick up on other, like, yeah. Like you, you mean you look and listen to some, what somebody says, like the way you like, I yeah, like man, we all do. And I just yeah, like really it, carry it. everybody's that's emotions. The word. You know, I'm an empath. And so I feel very deeply. Like I feel thing. I pick up, I take it around with me, the energy and I raise that energy and like, no, it's, it's so ridiculous. So, and I always just like, Oh yeah. The way he said it and the way he looked when he said it, it's two different yeah. way, two different things. And you can, you can see that, like, I think, and I think re- watching reality shows teaches you to do that too. We watch so much conflict, yes, you know, yes. so many things that you can tell when something's about to bubble over or when somebody's about to get activated or when, you know, like I was saying earlier, when Maya was going like, oh, I'm such a bad influence. Uh, like, the way you're saying that, if you just read the line and just said, if you read it verbatim, oh, I'm such a bad influence, not so bad. But then if you're like, oh, I'm such a bad influence, then you're yeah. like, oh, damn, dude, you're like really poking Lindsay. Yes, yes. It, it's just like Maya said. It's not what you said, but how you said it, Maya. Yeah, exactly. um, I think, yes, I think that that's 100% true about like how, uh, like reality TV has definitely helped me through many of my friendships. Like I'm, you know, like in my late 30s and I have a lot of friends, like girlfriends and they're all moms and stuff. And there's been some arguments and like little like low-key simmering beefs between certain you know groups and I'm like I've seen this on shows and this is not gonna go well so I'm gonna stay right out of it like you know I've like learned not to be the messenger I've learned not to be a Sheena in my life I've learned not to be like super defensive of people like Danielle and then because I'm like I don't know who's gonna hurt me like I don't know who's gonna like have my back in those situations because I've learned from reality tv so it's educating really well 
Well, how it is in real life is that we run from conflict. We mm -hmm. run. Reality shows want you to run into conflict. It's like completely yes. the reality shows go, no, you have to go directly in. And we spend our lives trying to get directly out of conflict for the most part, like 98% yes. of people. There's 2% that love it, that live for it, that want to create drama and there's not even a camera on them. But reality shows and reality shows, you'll see, you'll take somebody really nice and by the end of their reality show run, they can be a complete villain that loves, you know, I mean, like I think how Lisa Rinna ended compared to how she yes. started, she was always pretty messy, but she got so, uh, so insane by the end and so yes. mean and so and that's why i don't like all the interviews that rena gave like hey we, I, I decided it was time to move on <laughs> you know it was like yeah. the lies that we tell ourselves the lies that bravo people tell themselves when they're off a show is wild like yeah by everybody's accounts bravo's never fired anybody bravo's wanted everybody to come back but it's like jack's decided to remove himself and we all know that's like <laughs> BS. yes yes yeah exactly well, um, let's uh, let's wrap it up. I mean, do you have any other thoughts about these Looney Tunes from Summer House and Vanderpump Rules? So many thoughts. I mean, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, <laughs> it, it. I will say I started liking the new cast members on Summer House more this week. I liked hearing little fat. Like I liked seeing Gabby with her parents. I liked mm -hmm. hearing Chris talk about his parents, um, you know, being immigrants and like, uh, you know, the mom saying, I don't want you to be in a relationship. you got to do this. Yeah. I will say though, that I'm a little confused with Chris. Cause then I was like, Oh, does that mean you just fuck girls and like, don't have a relationship with them? Like, what does that mean? <laughs> like, does that, he's like, uh, I'm doing the good thing for my mom. I just have sex with them. Like, what does that mean? Like, that's what I wanted to know. He's like, I won't get into a relationship. I ghost every time. I'll have sex with him though. Like, that's what I wanted to know. Cause I was like, so you've stayed out of relationships, but you've totally, it made, it, I, I, those are the questions I, I want. And I think Gabby's awesome. I'm even down for Sam's like a mini female Kyle. Like she was like one, yeah, like, Oh, can we dance on the, can we dance on the, and I don't mean that like, there's no flirty thing. I don't think there's anything no, no, weird. No, no. Like she I really think she's just be his daughter. Mini Kyle. Yeah. 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 She really, really could be his daughter. They have a very similar energy about the both of them. And they both, and like at one point Sam is drunk and she's like, Oh, you really could be my dad because like they're both outside. Like nobody's outside, but they're both like dancing outside and like playing with some sort of like well, Kyle's put something little, on like, his ankle and he's just jumping yes. over it. Like he's just like jumping <laughs> over like that. Yes. I think it was like, oh, no, bravo. It's not like she uh, posted something of like, oh, I'm tired of watching scenes of Kyle by himself. I'm like, no, I want all scenes of Kyle by himself. <laughs> I'm one of those weirdos that are like, yeah, man, let's see how many cookie dough things you can put in your mouth. Like uh, for me, I'm like, hell yeah. Like I love to see like to me, that's like a Hamlet soliloquy. That's a Hamlet monologue. <laughs> it is like, how dareth my cookie doughs get into this mouth? -eth? Oh, I've lost my towel, you know? Imagine really if like Kyle is really tapping into all of his Shakespeare, like somewhere yeah. when he's drunk, it's like it's over. Oh like that's it. Yeah, he was, <laughs> How do I compare thee to a summer's day, me lady? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, Ryan, thank you so much for being on here. This was like, honestly, I could talk to you for probably another hour. This is like the longest episode I've done in a really long oh, time. See, oh, see, dude, I was on, I, I was legitimately on one. It's just, that I've been so stressed out this week. So this was so nice to, <laughs> no, no, no it. honestly, it was so nice to be able to come on and just like, go. and I know that I don't have to edit this. I know I don't have to, like, I'm so happy <laughs> just to like. I, I'm just so happy to yell and stuff. So I'm so sorry if I over talked, but I, I got no, so excited, but yeah. And by the way, you killed it on my show so much. And like, I got so many amazing compliments about oh you gosh. that you are yeah. like, you, I mean, like whenever you want to come back, it, it, the floor is yours. Cause like, uh, you really, truly, this was, I've had two amazing conversations with you. Um, and it, it's just, it's, yeah, I was really looking forward to this. So thank you. Well, thank you. That's really sweet. I am looking into finding that true life. I'm getting married episode. Like it, it's, I'm on a hunt for it and we are going to, I'm going to find it. I'm going to send it to yeah. you and then we're going to recap it because I feel like that is, that's prime time television. <laughs> Well, it's the, like, it, well, it's kind of like an origin story, like, you know, superhero origin, <laughs> yes. like we'll get to see the origin of Danielle on Jersey. And <laughs> I think those things, oh my God, I said this the other day real quick. I said like, 
the Countess Luann thing I was talking about, like Countess Luann, like somebody got sick at her cabaret show and then yes, Dorinda was like yes. wasted. Wouldn't you love a Countess Luann black and white documentary, like Lady Gaga or like, or like just like go like her town to town, like just like a fly on the wall, you know, she's getting ready and like the stuff, like she was like, tough night out there. Somebody threw up in my hair, you know, like, like the, and just like, can you see just like a black and white, like truth or dare kind of just like this, I, if they're not going to do uh Roni legacy, we're like, fine, like just start filming your own documentary. I would pay to watch a can Countess Luann documentary about her cabaret series did you see the song that somebody made t kyle i don't know who they are but they are oh yeah the the uh I'm a, they keep on uh, serving cunt <laughs> yeah cunt, 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 cunt. <laughs> okay uh i love i love that song that's the song in the summer tom hamlet of dumpster dive sent that over to me and i was like dying um yeah i mean i would love that but luann did have the on bravo they had this like before there were housewives series that they did like years only ago. per no it I was think- she was the only one they did it on yes i want it was them so to continue good. it yes it was so good that's the kind of crap it's like I, you know if bravo's like wants an extended universe and all of this stuff and like start doing start investing in the history of bravo like cuz there's yes. genuinely a history start like reveling in it start like you know i want to i want to get a reunion of like life on the d list i want to get a reunion of like i want to get uh uh where are they now on gallery girls where are they now on mm-hmm. nyc prep where are they like start leaning into these things so you'll have them as content for all of the like you know streaming services and stuff yes absolutely i agree with that all right well that's it for this episode ryan thank you so much for being here um well i'm just gonna keep talking after we go so i'm just gonna keep on i'm just gonna act (laughs) like you're here you can stop it right here i'm just gonna keep going so anyways (laughs) what do you think they eat in the summer house ryan well that's a great question brother um i know carl likes to cook uh, hamburgers i know that And Kyle seems to be, I'm going to lean into this. Kyle seems to be on a keto diet that he fucks up every single weekend. He gets there and he's like, ah, I'm going to, I'm going to be good. I'm going to, and then I'll, blow, drunk. I'll blow your mind. I'll blow your mind. <laughs> I think this is okay. I think, you know, how Schwartz used to get wasted so he could cheat on Katie and he'd be like, oh, it's the liquor. I don't even, I think now Kyle's at a grown up phase where he gets wasted just so he can cheat on his diet. <laughs> yes. It's yeah, still he cheating, but he's like, I can't, I'm not, I, I love a man. I'm not going to cheat on her, but I'm going to cheat on this diet. I don't know where I, I don't know. It's the alcohol, babe. Yeah. It's like, that's, yeah. that's I, I think it was last week where he was like, I'm going to have these cards because these sugar cubes are adorable. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know, immature men cheat on their women. Grown men cheat on their diets. That's. <laughs> and that's growth. Yeah, that's called growth. That's like, you see the growth in Kyle. Cause back in the day, he was like, I made out with somebody, I guess. Like, I, I don't know. Ask Jack Daniels. Like, <laughs> all right. Uh, Ryan, okay. where can everybody listen to you? <laughs> uh, yeah. So, so bad. Well, not after this, that you won't have to do that. Um, so bad. It's good with Ryan Bailey. Uh, you can find that on podcasting apps and, Oh, uh, on the Patreon, this is patreon.com forward slash so bad. It's good. I do a line by line recap of summer house. Um, mm. so if you are somebody that wants like kind of a longer form line by line, uh, retelling of these episodes, uh, that's it's over on the Patreon. Cause I'm not covering summer house on the main feed. Um, and when does this come out? This comes out tonight. Okay, perfect. Watch what crap ends. The crappies are tomorrow. And I found out that I'm doing a pre-show at 6.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time backstage, I think. So I'm really nervous about that. So um, they're legends. So (laughs) if anybody wants to join the pre-show to watch me talk to some of the guests, um, do that. And also go, you can watch the show online and it should be really exciting, hopefully. Yeah, I'm I'm going to be online watching that. So I will yeah. check you out. And I think you're going to do amazing because uh, you're so good at everything, Ryan. And, and hope, um, yeah. please go and please go subscribe to Ryan's podcast and rate and review him. And um, Ryan, I can't wait to have you back to talk to you. Yeah, it's insane. That's what I'm saying. Anytime, anytime you're like, I, hey, you have me on. You're, you're, the floor is yours. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you.